city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Sandcastles, but he was too. Renato wondered if his future self had commissioned these poles. enough, thought Renato. for global warming. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty.
Renato wondered if his future self had commissioned these poles. You couldn't hack this kind of firewall. You had to warm it up to you. time for a little exploration. Sure, he'd find something useful in one of these things. urging him to capture Zenobia. Uh, obviously it was a trap, but you never knew how Lupino thought. Sometimes his plans were so convoluted they did the exact opposite to what Lupino wanted. Yeah, there must be some way to play on that, Renato thought. There was a cat in this one and something useful. Slice like ham.
So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong? thought Renardo. Oh, this is going to be fun, said Lapino, as he ran to go set up his marvelous plan. You couldn't go sticking jewels in your gauntlet just anywhere. What if you dropped one and broke it? Luckily, there was a bench right here. Gem of power. Ooh, he didn't find those every day.
Renato felt dubious about the whole plan. With every step, he was waiting for it all to go horribly wrong. But against all odds, Pino's idiotic plan worked. Zenobia's ravens ran off after the geese, the net dropped, and Renato jumped out of the watermelon and put his sword to Zenobia's throat. Renato, she said. Are those new scars? They look good on you. You never return my velvet jacket. It was my favorite. You look stupid in velvet. Oh, what does an imperial princess know about style? Oh, get a room, you two, said Latino. But the fleet was coming on fast, so they put Zenobia on the Farfarer and took her east over the Nexus. She'd vanished from Swordful School, from his life, without even saying goodbye, without ever telling him she was the Emperor's adopted daughter. Ah, Lapina was right, Renato thought reluctantly. She knows things. She recognized his look. You're taking me to the interrogators, aren't you? She said, wide-eyed. And then she jumped, with horror. Renato saw Zenobia plummeting. Then he saw the Nexus below them. Cats always land on their feet. Ah, oh, she'll head for the Imperial outpost, yelled the Pino. You have to catch her. Cats can run faster, but foxes can run longer. If he ran, he could head her off before she reached her minions at the outpost. Well, he did love a good chase. Renata had been the terror of the sandcastles when he was too... an engraving. Maximum capacity, 130 people. that path before. Sense the jewel's power. He had a feeling they were going to be great friends. He was closing on her. He could smell her fear. He tried not to think about the interrogators at the secret base. What did they do to her? Maybe it didn't have to end that way. 
Maybe he could talk to her. But, after all, there were worse things the Imperials had done to friends of his. It did not matter how outnumbered the Rebellion was. The secret Zenobia held could level the playing field. Codes. Passwords. She could wreak havoc with just a few whispers to a far speaker. People had laughed at the government workbench placement program. But you could see the benefits everywhere. Bernardo reached the outpost. The Imperials there were no match for him. Soon after, Zenobia limped up the path. When she realized he was already in front of her, she didn't even try to run. Oh, you left without saying goodbye. Again, he said, please. You're enjoying this a little too much. She said, shaken. Oh, spare us the chit chat, would you? Said Lapino as he shackled her hands so she couldn't throw spells. She knows all his plans. All the way back to the Farfarer, Lapino nagged Renato about how the interrogators would pry all the intel out of Zenobia. How that would turn the tides in the imminent battle. All they had to do was take her to the rebel's secret base. Renato didn't like to think about what the interrogators would do to her. Couldn't he just talk to her? As they reached the ruins, Renato could see ravens everywhere, searching for the rebel base. They'd have to hide the Farfarer or go on foot. What if we get separated? Asked Lapino, for once thinking ahead. I'll show you a map to the base. Renato told Lapino. Renato, don't do this, said Zenobia. We were friends once. We shut it, witch, or I'll shackle your mouth too, said Lapino. See? Renato thought. There was no way Lapino was working for the Empire. He really hated Zenobia. And then, a few moments later, they touched down. As Lapino pulled Zenobia off the Farfarer, Renato readied himself for the battle ahead. I'm sorry I nicked your jacket, she said. It's just... Oh God. It's stupid, but... It smelled like you. What? He said, confused. Then... Oh Why didn't you write? Why didn't you far speak? Ah, oh, save the romantic nostalgia. Let's go! Street Lapino. So Renato launched himself down the path to the secret base. <laughs> That's my order, thought Renato. He was such a wit.
Raven. They eat the rebel! Caught another. He missed her. Not Zenobia. Hypatia, the kid's mother. Renato had never thought he'd date a librarian. He'd always figured himself for the barmaid type. But then, he'd never figured the library of Ubar would have comic books, or that Hypatia would know anything about them. He missed her. Lapino's idea to capture Zenobia. Lapino, who'd guessed she'd run to the outpost. There was something wrong with the way none of Lapino's plans had gone wrong yet. It wasn't like him. down, he thought. Could go that way, he thought.
They caught their breath. It's beautiful, she said, looking at the ruins. This used to be the library of Ubar, he said, before your father's ravens smashed it. Do we have to talk politics? She asked. That's not how I want to remember you, she said with an odd, wistful look at her face. She was as beautiful as she'd ever been, and as brave. Lapino huffed. They got back on the trail. There was an inscription, no spitting. I'd have loved to improve his gear.
He'd been promised cake. Sleep tight, thought Renato. The long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. Nothing was on fire. So far, so good. Behind door number two. their way to the secret rebel base. Renata felt strange. Zenobia was his prisoner, yet somehow she felt more like an old friend. He wanted to tell her all his secrets, 
But suddenly, the ruins lit up with thousands of fireworks. There was a thunderous roar and dust rose. The caves were collapsing. The caves? You've been playing me? Bernardo said, and he stared at Zenobia. I'm sorry, she said, and she seemed almost embarrassed. Then, everything went dark. When Renato came to, he had a terrible headache. Also, Zenobia's sword was at his throat. And her shackles were gone. So was Lupino. The terrible thing is, he said, I really have missed you. Now that we've destroyed the rebellion, would you consider becoming an advisor to the Emperor's daughter? I'm no one's servant. Everybody serves. Even if it's only destiny. I like to choose my own destinies, he said. The whole point of a destiny is you can't choose. Oh, never mind, she said. Look, if I see you again, I'll have to kill you. He watched her ship soar away. He would see her again, he decided. Even if he had to fight his way across the entire fleet. The Imperial fleet was cleaning up the few rebel remnants. For only a moment, he thought about running. Ah, but heroes don't run, even when the world is against them. Even when their cause is hopeless and their efforts futile and pointless and useless and death painful and guaranteed, he's decided to stop thinking for a while. You never knew where the road would take you, thought Renato. wondered idly if people who had built these poles had really, really long tentacles. Renato's arm was sore, his armor wet with raven blood. He was tired of death. But death was not yet tired of him. The rebels were losing. Badly. In some other universe, Renato thought, he and Zenobia had left sword food school together, taken other names and sailed off into the mists. But not this Zenobia, and not him. For him, there was nothing to do but forge ahead, kill the Emperor, and end this. Imagine if you built a house in one of these things. It would be amazing. It would be like having a boat.
Soon he'd confront the Emperor. Funny that this whole war had come about because the Emperor feared death. And now it was coming for him. There was some sort of lesson there, wasn't there? reached the Empress ship. Zenobia was there. Why'd you have to come back? She said, Guess I'm just serving my destiny. He shrugged. You don't even know what that word means. She said, Do you ever wonder if things have been different all the time? She said, and drew her sword. In the end, Renardo lay bleeding out on the deck. Zenobia sat by his side, upset. What are you so upset about? He asked. You wouldn't understand. Why? Why didn't you tell me you were going to leave school? I was afraid you'd convince me not to. I guess I'll have to buy you a drink in the halls of the Valiant then, he told her. And then he was gone. But he'd learned. Another true thing, Zenobia still had feelings for him. There would be a way to win. Renato could feel it. He'd have to explore choices he'd never made before he could figure it all out, though. And with that, the book's pages fluttered to the beginning once again. And he fell.
Zenobia wasn't just the Emperor's daughter, of course. She'd been Renato's best friend in Swordfu school. And you're still mad for her, the rabbit reminded him. The rabbit had a point. The city was already under Zenobia's control. Dash, thought Renato. Road less traveled, thought Renato. How intriguing. a workbench when you needed one. Oh, never mind. Ah. Why was Lupino urging him to capture Zenobia? Obviously, it was a trap. But you never knew how Lupino thought. Sometimes his plans were so convoluted they did the exact opposite to what Lupino wanted. Yeah, there must be some way to play on that, Renato thought. The rock felt hot in his hand. He could feel its secret power. Anyone ever tell you you have a lovely eye? No?
Who leaves these chests everywhere? Wondered Renato. I should send him a thank you note. So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong? thought Renardo. Oh, this is gonna be fun, said Lupino as he ran to go set up his marvellous plan. It had arcane power, and an engraving. To Cindy. Renato felt dubious about the whole plan. With every step, he was waiting for it all to go horribly wrong. But against all odds, Pino's idiotic plan worked. She'd vanished from Swordfoo School, from his life, without even saying goodbye. Without ever telling him she was the Emperor's adopted daughter, Renato was aware of her feelings. Maybe this was a bad idea, but was he letting his own feelings get the better of him? Listen, said Renaro. Let's not do this. Let's not do what? Asked Zenobia. Look, you're the Emperor's right hand. You were going to have me interrogated, he said. Sure, yeah, but then I remembered how you feel about me. How I feel about you. You were going to have me interrogated. But I didn't, because you care about me. Said Renato. Well, yes again, Buster, he said as he pushed him off his own boat. As he plummeted towards the bottomless clouds of the abyss, Renato decided that he would not really handle the situation with his usual finesse. He had tried something bold and paid the price for it. The city was already under Zenobia's control. I had to admire her efficiency. Renato shivered at the thought of Zenobia at the mercy of the interrogators. Could he really turn her over to them? 
But this was war. It wasn't meant to be pretty. Find out what's next, he thought. Renato had been to a dungeon once where all the chests had teeth and eyes. It had been a short visit. Could you convince a firewall you're its friend? urging him to capture Zenobia. Uh, obviously it was a trap. But you never knew how Lupino thought. Sometimes his plans were so convoluted they did the exact opposite to what Lupino wanted. Yeah, there must be some way to play on that, Bernardo thought. Guys have had it.
So, what's this plan of yours? Use me as bait, said Lupino. And he outlined a slightly complicated plan that involved geese, a net, setting the farfare a little bit on fire, Lupino dressing as an old blind toad, and Renardo hiding inside a monstrous watermelon. What could possibly go wrong? thought Renardo. Oh, this is going to be fun, said Lupino, as he ran to go set up his marvelous plan. I wonder what happens if I go that way. step for a fox, he thought. Renato felt dubious about the whole plan. With every step, he was waiting for it all to go horribly wrong. But against all, she'd vanished from Swordfu School, from his life, without even saying goodbye, without ever telling him she was the Emperor's adopted daughter. Renato was aware of her feelings. Maybe this was a bad idea, but was he letting his own feelings get the better of him? Ah. Lapina was right, Renato thought reluctantly. She knows things. She recognized his look. You're taking me to the interrogators, aren't you? She said, wide-eyed. And then she jumped, with horror. Renato saw Zenobia plummeting. Then he saw the Nexus below them. Cats always land at their feet. Ah, oh, she'll head for the Imperial outpost, yelled Lapino. You have to catch her. Cats can run faster, but foxes can run longer. If he ran, he could head her off before she reached her minions at the outpost. Well, he did love a good chase. Somebody 
been watching. coming through that door. That had been closed before. the hero. Renato had heard stories of a dungeon where chests were filled with potions and weapons. Fairy, he was closing on her. He could smell her fear. He tried not to think about the interrogate. free climbing. Renato reached the outpost. The Imperials there were no match for him. Soon after, Zenobia limped up the path. When she all the way back to the Farfarer, Lapino nagged Renato about how the interrogators would pry all the intel out of Zenobia. How that would turn the tides in the imminent battle. All they had to do was take her to the Rebel's secret base. Renato didn't like to think about what the interrogators would do to her. Couldn't he just talk to her? As they reached the ruins, as look.
thought about Hypatia. Oh, she'd been an amazing rabbit. She could talk to him about comics and talk to her son about history and battles and talk to scholars about the ancient tomes hidden deep in the vaults of the library of Ubar. Poor Renato really missed her. had misgivings. It had been Lapino's idea to capture Zenobia. Lapino who guessed she'd run to the outpost. There was something wrong with the way none of Lapino's plans had gone wrong yet. It wasn't like him. Thing Renato didn't have vertigo. He wished there were more pylons he could use the hook on. They really needed to construct additional pylons. Well, he always wanted to do that. They caught their breath. It's beautiful. 